welcome to the Tech On Demand podcast and video, and this is going to be an interesting one. As we've discussed in the past in more than a few of our podcasts and videos, the key to successfully producing high-quality crops often starts at the very beginning. And how you and your team approach the earliest stages of germination and propagation sets the stage for uniformity down the line. I'm really happy to welcome back frequent guest, Dr. Will Healy. Will is uh, recently retired as senior manager of the Ball Technical Services team, but Will continues to think about ways to share his knowledge and decades of experience with growers of all shapes and sizes. He's worked with a lot of them on a lot of different crops and has a lot of great information to share, and this time he's here to focus on seed-raised petunias. Will, how are things going as you settle into your retirement and why did you contact me to put together content on petunias? Well, Bill, thanks for inviting me to um, talk about you know a topic that I you know you could say I know of a little bit about. You know, I've only spent probably you know thirty years with Ball and another ten years before that dealing with growers who um, were trying to get uniform germination of petunias. And what triggered this whole achieving uniform petunia germination and flowering um, thought was. Um, during the Facebook uh, uh, last year, I saw a number of different growers commenting, lamenting, challenged with getting uniform flowering of their plants at the end of the season. How do they get you know, growth regulators applied more uniformly? Um, and of course, it all tr basically traces back to uniformity of flowering. If you take a look at you know our um, opening slide, you can see some of these little runs and some of these big mature ones. You can see all different leaf counts. And of course, it all goes back to if you can get uniform germination, uniform hand, um, establishment at the, at the start, they basically poop along right on, pretty much on schedule. And so, um, you know, it's taken me about a year to uh, pull this all together because, you know, in retirement, there's so many things going on that you have to deal with. So what I wanted to do is uh, talk about this topic because petunias can be a challenge for growers, especially if they miss out on a couple of key things. And there's just only a couple. So let's really focus on what do we need to do to be more uniform germination? Does that sound like a good plan, Bill? It sounds like a great plan. It makes a lot of sense. Petunias are obviously a very key spring plant, and I'm sure that our viewers and listeners are going to pick up a lot of tips and tricks as you take us through the process. And you mentioned uh, the Facebook group, and that's the Greenhouse Tech Team Facebook group that, uh, that we moderate through the Ball Tech On Demand team. And you're right, there were a lot of germination questions. Um, sometimes I think, wow, I don't know how many people are germinating their own seeds these days because of the rise of plug production, but there are a lot of right. all sizes and all across North America and around the world. So this information is definitely going to be relevant uh, to, to quite a wide audience. So why don't you go ahead and get started? And if okay. I have questions, I'm going to jump in and, and, and ask them. Uh, okay. But, you know, you know a lot about this, so why don't you take it away? Okay, because, you know, first of all, when you buy high-quality seed fresh every year, and that's really critical, um, the seed has been tested before it's shipped. It tends to have a high germination. If you buy it from ball seed, you can get a BVI, which will help you identify the uniformity of germination. And so when you get a high BVI and a high germination um, and then experience uneven germination, let's talk about that problem because... High quality seed that has high BVI is going to perform uniformly if you follow the key factors. Um, so, you know, let's just talk about uniform um, seedling stands because, you know, the first of all, let's define a few topics, Bill, um, because otherwise people get really confused because some people say it's germinated when the leaves have unfolded. Well, no, that's not true because the germination, let's talk about it as a process. The germination process, it begins when the water is absorbed by that seed, and that's really important that it uniformly absorbs water, and it basically, germination process ends when that radical, that little root, leaves the seed. That is the technical period of germination. So once the um, root has elongated, it has technically germinated. 
So we're really talking about really early stages when actually you probably don't even see much because when you get to the hook where the basically the, the seed's starting to step, step out of the soil and the cotyledons unfold, you're you know way past that point. One of the things that you really want to be thinking about always is how uniform, how synchronized is that germination, that um, absorption of water, that radical elongating, and then consequently the hypocotyls, um, the hypocotyl elongating, the cotyledons unfolding. Um, what we always talk about is, is the 48 hour window. What that means is that once it starts, anything that unfolds within that first 48 hours is uniform. It's because then with petunias, there's a little bit of variability in growth rate, but that first 48 hours from the first one to the, what is there at 48 hours is critical because if, it, if they start showing up at 72, 96, five days, six days after the first ones, those are going to most likely be nothing but trouble. They're going to be um, weaker. You're never going to be able to water them correctly. You're not going to be able to growth regulate them correctly. They're going to actually, with data that we've done over the years, they're actually going to flower up to a week later than the plants that all flower, that all germinate within that 48 hours. So it's really important that we focus on getting that uniform stand within that 48 hour window. It's not 48 hours after sowing. Let's just be real clear on that, Bill. It's really, it's that 48 hours once it starts 48 hours, um, two days later, what's there? Because if we take a look at um, the picture that just showed up, what we see is the um, group on the left basically are in that 96, four days, five days, six days later, those ones that are circled, you know, they're not bad seedlings. There are no bad seedlings. It's just that they're just late to the party. And of course, if you're late to the party, Bill, don't you usually miss all the good stuff? Yeah, you so, miss the food. You miss uh, you miss all the fun, and those yeah. certainly look uh, look late. And you're kind of out of place, and so we really want to be very uniform, um, and that translates into uniform seedling um, leaf count. Okay. A lot of people say, well, it's all about temperature. No, temperature is a modulator. It just basically modulates how fast. If you germinate very cool, it's all very slow. If you germinate really warmer, it's all very fast. So, you know, when they talk about optimum temperatures, that's important. Let's not forget that. But let's not get transfixed on that because it's really, as we will find out, it's about water triggering it as a key factor. So let's go and review. And if you've listened to any of the Achieving um, Uniform Germination um, presentations that I've done, you'll recognize this slide. But, you know, don't go. Let's really focus on this because every single class, every single petunias and patients and begonias, they all have something a little bit different. And that little bit different is the thing that growers consistently do wrong. Um, one of the, there's four, first three steps. The first step is the pellet melts or dissolves. We do not wash the pellet off because if you wash it off, what you have a high probability of doing is basically burying the seed. And that's going to be a problem in a second when we talk about it. But you really want to just melt it. And if you think about it as melting, you'll be able to see it in a little while when we talk about a little bit more detail. But melting, you're going to basically just, it's there surrounding the seed. Because when you melt it, what it does is that that pellet basically is... Um, either a clay, which of course holds water, or it could be a vermiculite, depending upon who's doing the pelleting, um, and that can hold water. And that's really important because that water being held by that pellet actually increases in the uniformity of water absorption by that seed coat. So if you wash all the pellet powder away, you're basically exposing the seed to, what'd you think, Bill? Dry soil? Yeah. Dry it air? Dry right out. Yeah, and it dries out, and it violates Step B, which is the seed coat is not uniformly absorbing water. When you have ununiform germination, it is because it has not uniformly absorbed water from seed to seed to seed to seed. So that's why we like to just melt that pellet so that pellet has a chance to just be there to help balance the moisture in and around the seed. Once that seed coat absorbs water, then it, that water moves into the um, inner membrane, and then starts tr triggering the gibberellins, the um, and this is all about water. 
That and first 48 thing. hours, Bill, it's about water. And, and that seems to that, usually be the case. It's that moisture management. It's keeping yep. the moisture uniform um, all the way you know, through some of the even first stages after germination. So really the, the difference that you're talking about here with this slide is that step of melting off the pellet. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And not not washing it off because if, if by day two or day three you can't see a little pellet powder down there in the pot, you've you've you're in trouble. Conversely, and we're gonna talk about this, I'll just mention it now, is you also want to make sure that that pellet opens up because sometimes if you don't put enough water, the pellet does not harden. In fact, what happens is, is that it, um, there's an outside glue. Think of it as an egg. So they put, when they make the pellet, they put a, a coating on the outside. So you get it a little bit wet. What it does is it, it basically takes that outside glue and pushes it into the seed. And actually you create ball bearings. You know, so when you start getting, you know, seven, 10 days after you sowed the seed and you can actually, actually see the pellet still fully round, fully intact, that's will never germinate. Right. You basically created a ball bearing that is not going to crack open. And so therefore you didn't put enough water. That water in the beginning is all critical in this uniform petunias. And we're gonna talk more detail of what do we mean by too much, too little, just right. Because saying put enough water is a useless piece of information because we can quantify this into exact numbers to be successful. So anyway, so let's just talk a little bit about what happens now that we got the water in it and then it's kind of got the, the ball rolling. Um, one thing that's different about petunias is there is a light requirement on some varieties. So this is why we want to be very sensitive to not bury the seed. Because if you bury the seed, it's in the dark. And so therefore it's gonna germinate at a later time. And, when you, and we're gonna talk about how do you end up inadvertently burying the seed. And we're gonna talk about that um, in a little bit later when we talk about sowing. But let's just remember, not all petunias require light, but there's enough of them out there that will periodically need light that we just wanna make sure that we've got light always on the petunias after they have um, absorbed moisture. Okay, once you basically have got the water in there and if they are exposed to light, it basically then the starch starts breaking down um, and the cells start multiplying um, and then they start triggering all kinds of growth because you, you're basically transcribing DNA into RNA and growth starts to occur and that all requires oxygen and that's why we need to go through wet and dry cycles. Um, not as critical as petunias as it was with pansies that we've talked about or impatience that we talked about, but it's really important that we don't end up creating a gel coat which prevents oxygen uptake by that seed. So make sure that you um, go through a wet dry and we're gonna quantify what is wet and what is dry. At that point, the growth is basically causing the seed coat to crack and then the radical starts to emerge and then we're off to running and germination process is now done as we have mentioned before. So let's now get down to the nuts and bolts of where growers fail. Soil moisture at the time of flat filling is really important. We need to be at a level three, level three and a half. So if we take a look at um, moisture weights, and I think, Bill, there is a um, webinar and podcast on um, moisture management, isn't there? Yep, and I will put the links in the video description and show notes. Um, we've, we definitely have a good video on training your team to water that talks about uh, weigh, the importance of weighing trays. Yeah. And it also tells you how to um, calculate what is level three, level four, level two, level five for your individual tray soil configuration. But let's just, for the sake of this conversation, let's just say that a level three is about 1100, level um, three and a half is probably gonna be 12, 12 and a half, 1200 um, grams. But that's kind of what the weight of the tray, and you should be weighing them to make sure that they are at the right moisture level because that's the starting point. Because if you start at 800 and you run it through a water tunnel and you add three more, well, then you're only at 1,100 grams because you started at 800 um, and then you add 300 more in the water tunnel. 
you know, 300 plus 800 is 1,100. If you start at uh, 1,400 and you add 300, well, now you're at 1,700 and you're saturated. Now, and that's a whole nother set of problems. So let's make sure that you got the right moisture before you ever drop seed on it. And this is the first place growers consistently make mistakes. Because what happens when you don't have the right amount of moisture? This is an example with um, snapdragons where basically you end up with this hypocotyl, that's that stem below the cotyledons. Sometimes they're tall, sometimes they're short, and that's because you've got ununiform moisture going into the tray. Now, how do you know that you've got that? Well, a lot of times if you take trays and set them out on the bench and just see what they look like after 24 hours, and you start seeing this um, checkerboard of wet and dry, that basically is where you're going to end up with very ununiform germination um, and ununiform stands because the soil moisture is not uniform. Because remember, once the soil is in that tray, everything you do from that point on is done very uniformly. You water it with the... Um, with booms, you water it with the water tunnel, everything is applied uniformly. So if you have ununiformity within the tray and you apply a uniform amount of moisture, it, you're not gonna fix it. No one has ever fixed this little picture down in the bottom left-hand corner, we got the checkboard. They never fix it until probably about two to three weeks after it's sown. And at that point, you know, as we said, 48 hours from first to last is dependent upon what happens between the time you sow it to the first seedlings come up. So by the time you can fix it at three weeks after sowing, the game's over. The ununiformity is now the name of the, the game. And so you've, to get uniform, you've got to start uniform. I can't stress this enough. And it all goes back to the flat filler. Are you applying the moisture uniformly in the flat filler? Um, are you making sure that there's not dry soil on your flat? You know, when you're... Um, in the flat filling process, you know, in the bin that you are using um, on the flat filler itself, that flat filler should be the cleanest piece of equipment in your operation every single night. There should not be soil that's sitting on the, on the flat filler because that dried out soil is going to fall into the tray and will create these problems. It seems like, and this is the kind of little things that, you know, it just, you know, it, it broke my heart when I read in um, on the Facebook um, site and people would have these problems and I could see dry soil and I'm thinking you know how do you explain to them clearly and succinctly dudes you got to clean up your act back at the flat filler at the flat and the soil mixing and before you ever sow the seed you're creating the nightmare before you start so starting right here is really important Centering and getting it in the light is really important with petunia, especially if you're mechanizing any of the process, you're doing gapping or thing. it's important to get that seed in the middle of the tray. Notice, I've given an example where you can clearly see that seed is not in the center of the cell. The seed is basically off-centered, and actually then it tends to be the ones in the top of the picture are towards the front of the cell, and then as it moves through, it's in the back, and you say, well, why is that? And another problem that we have, now, I don't know, Bill, can you see how there's almost like a little ledge? Mm -hmm. And because if you really look at that carefully, yeah. um, you can see this little ledge show up, um, and that has to do with how you dibble it. So these are two different problems that we're looking at. One is you're not getting the drum centered over the tray or the tray centered under the drum and or you're not getting that dibbler um, set correctly and this is one of the biggest problems that we have is that people buy their cedar they buy a drum um, their dibbler they buy the trays and this is a matched set now let's repeat that it is a matched set of three pieces to ensure that you've got seed in the center of the cell so if you basically say, oh, I've got cheaper trays or a little bit different trays, that starts moving the seed because the drum doesn't match the tray. And then, oh, by the way, if you have an old dibbler that basically scoops the soil, you build this little ridge that basically is there. Now, why is that important? Well, when you start then running that ridge through the flat filler, it actually ends up burying the seed. And if you notice, the seed um, in some of these, um, in this one row, um, right below the drum, you can see where some of the seed has actually been buried. Can you see that, Bill, over on the left-hand side? Yep. The last two ones on the um, left, 
They're yeah. basically buried. Um, and that's just because it ran through the, and the soil was pushed over the seed. And remember one of the things that we said about um, that's critical for petunia germination is, Bill, what? Not have, burying the seed. Yep, because they got to have light. Right. So this is really important that you basically do that. Um, so when you start looking at your um, seeding operation as you get started in these season make sure those guides are in the right place make sure that the drum is right make sure that everything is lined up and is dropping seed dead center in the middle of the cell so that you actually can maximize um, your uniformity it's the little things that basically start taking germination percentages off so when people buy 95 percent germ seed with a bvi of 750 and they basically say you know i ended up with about 82 percent usable I can basically take them back to the seeder and show them that A, they're not getting the seed in the middle of the cell. B, their dibbler is basically scooping soil and burying the seed. Then, and then, of course, then it goes into the whole water and problem. But a lot of times it's right here where the problems start. So let's talk about the water tunnel because this is where all the magic really begins. Um, your water tunnel basically has different nozzles okay right and mm -hmm. each nozzle has a very specific purpose you know this is not there to add water the purpose of those nozzles is to one the first nozzle is basically puts enough water that it glues the seed in place so it doesn't move as it's going through the next nozzles the next nozzle, nozzle number three, nozzle number two, they're used to basically ensure that you have the target moistures in the tray by the time it hits the end of the line of the water tunnel line. So what do we need to do? This is where we need to qualify the information into quantifiable numbers. Qualifying means too wet to dry. Quantify means that we put an actual number to that tray. And measuring the trays, you don't have to measure every tray, but you do have to go and when you first get started, making sure that you've got the speed of the belts right, that you've got enough water pressure going through, that you're hitting the right target. Where we see lack of uniformity of pellet germination is consistently where the growers are not putting enough water on the pellet at the time of sowing. You know, we talked about this hardening of the pellet creating ball bearings. It's because a lot of times when they're sowing raw seed, you know, for example, impatience is a raw seed. Begonias are not a raw seed. That's a pelleted seed. Um, pansies is a raw seed. We have to use a little bit different moisture because we have a pellet present in that tray. So if we say that we want to uh, make sure that we've got um, 1,100 grams um, for a non-pelleted product, so raw seed. But we may need to add an extra 100 grams, so we need to be at 1,200 or even as high as 1,300 grams at the time we're done sowing um, so that we have that correct amount of moisture on that pellet so that it starts cracking open slightly, and we'll see that in a minute, um, and that it's basically starting to melt as it's coming um, through the process. Also, um, the thing that you want to check is what do our pellets look like at four days, five days after um, we have sown them? Because if the pellets are still fully intact at day two, at day three, at day four, you're not putting enough water on, day, on at day zero. So what we normally recommend is up it by about 100 grams and you would be amazed at the difference 100 grams of water will make at the time of sowing. It's, it's you know, people say 100 grams, I mean, really? Yes, it is shocking how much of that 100 gram difference will make. So really focus on this to make sure that your pellets are melting on time all the time. The other thing that you may want to consider is in some operations, they sow and then they put it up on racks and then periodically head, take that rack and then move that rack out to the greenhouse or put it in a germ chamber or just move it somewhere else. Now, 
How dry do you think a um, German uh, sewing area is, Bill? It's it dry. Very dry. Very dry. I've seen people basically nuke germination. They've taken you know seed that was ninety five percent germ and take it down to sixty percent germ, only because they sewed it, they put it on a rack, and they went to lunch. Yeah. And we've done studies and um, looked at how fast stuff dries. And, you know, an hour in a dry germ sewing area is enough to basically harden that pellet. So if you are in a situation where you have to hold the, the trays um, on racks for a while or you can't move them for whatever reason, they're gonna be in a dry area. What you may wanna do is put a little extra water on those trays just to make sure that you're um, not going to dry out. So that's another way that you can kind of monitor what's going. So this whole tray weight um, is the next key to making sure that you've got success. So let's just look at what's happening when we um, to some seed. And this is day um, zero where we have level um, is where the moisture level is high enough. It's not less than um, level two. Um, then we basically uh, move on to day two, we move on to day three, and notice that in this case with pansies, notice the seed is already starting to crack. Um, you don't see this normally because you're either not looking at it or the seed may have started to get um, soil on it, so it's hard to find. But you know, day, by day um, four and by day five on uh, many seeds, the, seed, the radical is already starting to um, come out. And this is why we start talking, and this is where we would start looking at um, shortly after I'm um, going to day six, um, you'd really be concerned that are you going to get um, seed to germinate? Remember that if it's too dry, you're not going to get the, um, the development. If it gets too wet, and this is where growers you know, go out there and mist on a timer, and they just miss because, well, it's time to mist, and they just keep putting more and more water on these seeds. And what they're doing is they're gonna slowly start forming this gel coat, which basically stops germination. Because remember what we talked about, the first step was water for germination process, and the second step was oxygen. And if you have the gel coat on it, you do not get the oxygen into the seed. So really let's make sure that you're using your correct moisture levels, and every organization is gonna have a little bit different optimum uh, moisture levels that they wanna water up to, and then they wanna dry down to. So this is really important, especially as we start looking at pellets. So let's just talk about melting that pellet, okay? So here's a good example <clears throat> of ball bearings. This is some dianthus that um, a grower um, was basically complaining. Dianthus is one of the most uniform germinating crops that you could have. It comes up like sod, except in this case. And they said, well, what's the problem? We went out there and we looked at it. And sure enough, look at all those pellets that are, can you see all those pellets, Bill? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they haven't broken they, down at all. Yeah, I mean, don't they look like cracked eggs? <laughs> they do. So when you go to know, are you getting enough water on it, you do the pencil test. So you take a sharp pencil, and I usually use a pencil versus a pen because a pen can be sticky and it pulls the seed away, so use a pencil. Um, use a, a pointed pencil and you just kind of tap that, that pellet. If you tap the pellet and it gives away, so it just kind of starts breaking or melting away at the end of the sewing line, you know that you're on the right track. 24 hours later, you go and you, you check it again, and that pellet just basically is um, you know kind of mushy. That's the right moisture level. There you've got the right weights. If you go out there after um, 24 hours and you got little ball bearings out there that you have to really push hard and they crack open, you need to go back and say, let's try another 100 grams of water coming off the sewing line because we're drying them out a little bit too much or we're not getting enough water on them. Now, just a, um, a word, a common comment is <clears throat> the ball pellets, the yellow pellets 
are melting pellets. There is another type of pellet that sometimes you see out of European operations, um, European suppliers, which are cracking pellets. They basically, it's a pellet that's used for field crops, <clears throat> and the pellet actually, it's a, called a split pellet, and it'll actually split open. But that too, by day two, should have split open. So like, basically, think of it as a, it cracks open like a pea. So basically cracks in half. So um, either way, whether you've got a, a split pellet or you've got a melting pellet from ball, they, you know, you really need to know, make sure that they are melting correctly. Because when you have this, clearly th this is not going to work. So making sure that you've got enough water to soften the pellet. Notice that these are pellets on basically one day after. And you can kind of see there's a range of what they look like. But notice how they've all opened up a little bit. And these are just naturally open. Keep the moisture so that you prevent this from drying out. And that notice how they um, they slowly but surely are starting. And the one down in the bottom right hand corner of this um, four cells, that one did not get enough water. It's not cracked at all. So what should they look like? If you've got a really good eyesight, you can actually see this where you end up with a, by day three, you should have this little ball of oatmeal. This is the white pelleting powder, and you can actually see a little bit of a seed sitting there. Usually what we do is we take a picture of it and then just blow it up, and you can actually see it very carefully. That tells you you're on the right track. Notice the soil is moist, the pelleting powder is moist, and now we're in good. So you want that bowl of um, oatmeal with a raisin on top. So how do we do this from a water management standpoint? It's not just being wet, but it's also being dry because we want to make sure that we don't form that gel coat. So if we think about what we're doing is that once we've sown the seed, we have a hydration phase. And notice we go, in this case, we went out, we watered it up about 1,200 grams. Then we dry it back down to 1,000 grams. And when it hits 1,000 grams, <clears throat> we apply another, um, we apply 200 grams of moisture um, to get it back up. And that you can do with booms um, or even with mist nozzles by knowing that this amount of time or this many passes will, will, will um, place this much water on that tray so that you can actually manage the moisture very carefully. Then we go into cell division. Notice one of the things we did was we were continuing to add a little bit more moisture as we came to the end of hydration, just to make sure that we're uniformly hydrating them. But then again, we start drying it back. And notice how as we go through cell division, we're even drying it a little bit more than 1,000 grams. We even let it go just a little bit more because we want to make sure that we're now starting to get um, really good um, performance. Then finally, once we've got the cell division, we start getting rooting. Now we need to really start drying them back. Notice by day 10, we're basically taking it down to about 850 grams um, because that we want to make sure that we're drying it out to start forcing that root to start taking off and going. And then we start continuing to go through um, wet and dry cycles. And it's really important to take it through wet and dry cycles because when you don't, you end up with the infamous root running problem. You know, root running where the roots fail to um, enter into the soil is really an indication that um, the plant has got more than enough water in the surface and there is no oxygen. If you look really carefully um, at that root that's going across that soil, you can actually see some branches um, where it's sitting out in the air because you know, one of our um, common statements when we talk about watering is the um, statement of fish grow in water, roots grow in air. And that's why we want to dry out the soils to enhance that root development. And of course, when we see that we have constant high moisture, four plus, where we're continuously misting, especially after um, that initial hydration, basically we're at 1,400 plus grams, we're going to see this root running um, across the surface. Now, a lot of times people will say, whoa, it's really it's about soil compaction. Well, when you water a lot, you actually end up compacting the soil. And Bill, didn't we do a, um, a different webinar about how you can grow algae and sludge yep. and it compacts it? Isn't there yep. also a podcast on that? Yeah, it was the uh, slime, mold, and algae podcast and video that everybody liked so much. And he had some pretty 
ugly pictures in that one of some definitely a lot of slime and mold on the top of these plug trays but this was your exact point was that that compaction um, that was caused by over irrigation yeah and so we really want to watch that very carefully because if you start seeing this where the roots don't go down you need to start asking yourself why are we putting this much water what's happening here are we compacting that soil you know is the flat filler compacting it too much because that can always happen also but usually it's because you're um, putting too much water either to um, and that you're not getting that root to come out and go down that's really important you got to get that root down especially in that um, as you start going into that 48 hours you know, just make sure also that if you see it extensively, if you see a lot, if you have really weird pH and EC outside the normal ranges, um, and this is a pretty broad where it's very acidic down to four, you know, down below five, you know, down to four and a half and stuff, that can be a problem. You have very, very high EC, that can be a problem too. But normally, if you've got good soil from um, a reputable um, soil supplier, that's really not the problem. It's usually just a water issue. Um, and excess soil compaction sometimes, but usually it's, it's, you're too wet. So in summary, I mean, we've talked about a bunch of things, but let's just talk about the summaries. How do we achieve uniform petunia stance? How do we get that uniform? And of course, what we want to do is we really need to focus on that critical moisture level. If we have that critical moisture level and you have your targets, you know, do you have your starting point? Is your, what is your target is, um, as it comes out of the water tunnel um, to that first 48 hours? Making sure that you have not dried that pellet out, checking that pellet with the pencil, doing the pencil test on it to make sure that the pellet is starting to melt and you haven't washed that pellet out. Making sure that as you go from day three to day eight, that you begin to dry it out a little bit so that you have a dry target and a wet target so that you're oscillating between wet and dry you're not just keeping it uniformly wet because I see a lot of times when you have a lot of root running is because in this day three and eight they've just been pushing water there's this old wives tale of you know to get more uniform germination you just have to water more well no that's not the way it works it's actually making sure that you go through wet and dry cycles on day three to eight and then making sure that do you have a change point? At what point are you basically moving from the um, moisture issue um, to of keeping it a little bit wetter to basically going to a drier conditions so that you're basically changing your dry target and also your wet target. So that usually that, that change point is when you have about 40 to 60% of the cotyledons have begun to unfold. Um, and that, because that usually from the time you go to the, um, <clears throat> where the cotyledons first start showing up, where you're at the hook until they unfold, that's usually about 24 hours. So it happens very fast. So right in that 40 to 60% of the cotyledons unfolded, that's the point that you want to basically transition from um, what is your wet target and what is your dry target to make sure that you've got um, new targets compared to when you start the germination process. So those, you know, when I see where is the problem, it usually goes back to moisture management right there. So um, is there anything else, Bill, that, you, that we've talked about that you think that we should be trying to remember that's critical? Well, I think, you know, it occurs to me that if you don't manage the moisture correctly, if you haven't gone in ahead of time, learned the weights of your trays, tested your dibbler, tested the drum that's seeding, and done a lot of this upfront sort of maintenance and, and work before you even, before the seed even arrives at your greenhouse. You know, these are things that can be done in the off season because if that seed has been tested to germinate at 95%, and consistently, year after year, you're getting 85% germination out of it. There, there's something in the process that, that needs to be corrected. Yep. And now, and I think that, you know, if you're listening to this and watching this in real time, I mean, we're, we're getting to the holiday season, and there should be some time uh, at the beginning of the year to get this all squared away before the, the seed starts arriving in the greenhouse. And then... The other point, Will, that I think is probably worth reiterating is that 
the the burying the seed component because with petunias and a few other crops i think this is extremely critical and and probably somewhat unique or something that that just might be forgotten but it's also something that i that i think growers can go over with their teams this is this is the kind of thing that can be trained and and reminded and and noted don't you think oh yeah because you know the and and in words matter and so this is where i always say let's talk about melting that palate mm. let's talk about um the uh <clears throat> having a little oatmeal with a seed on top with a raisin on top you know so that we're not talking about washing the pellet off when people say wash the pellet off then a little bit of water turns into a lot of water because people want to do a really good job and when you wash what do you do you pour the water your firemen out there and that buries the seed then you run into the light problem if it is light sensitive and you just run into a lot of different problems so when you're training your growers make sure that you use the right words so that you don't end up confusing them so talk about it melting don't talk about wetter drier talk about how many more grams should we be doing should we put another 100 grams on should we put a hundred less grams on you know should we you know what should we be doing so that we're more directive and then all of a sudden petunia germination pretty much becomes a no-brainer so excellent we like we like no-brainers and i also like that you have this as your closing slide because one of the things that we really try to do uh through tech on demand here at ball is to give you multiple ways to find the information um, everybody has different learning styles. Perhaps you want to read about it in the weekly newsletter. Perhaps you want to watch a video. You might want to listen to it uh, in a podcast on your way to and from the greenhouse or when you're out walking the dog. And if you want to engage with a large community of more than 4,000 or 5,000 growers around the world, uh, we do have a Facebook group as well, so you can engage socially. I uh, will put links to all of these different resources in the show notes and the video description. Um, and if you want to see uh, all sorts of people on the ball tech team uh, giving uh, talks and presentations that you can share with your greenhouse team uh, for training and refreshing, we've got you covered. And I think with that, I am Bill Calkins with Tech on Demand, uh, reminding you, you can subscribe to uh, the Ball Seed YouTube channel to see uh, more than 100 Tech on Demand videos and to the Tech on Demand podcast brought to you by Grower Talks. We're on all of the different podcast apps, so pick your favorite. Find the Greenhouse, uh, the Grower Talks, Ball Tech on Demand podcast, and, uh, and you'll find more than 100 episodes as well. So, Will, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I think we'll be back with some other crops, don't you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely, because there are other problem children we need to talk about. Excellent. Well, we will be covering those in due time. Take care out there. Mm-hmm.